Hello, my name is Dick Hart, and this is a presentation I recently gave to the OpenID Foundation Board. The goal of the presentation was to align the board on what is user-centric identity, why is it important, and what can the OpenID Foundation do? So what is user-centric identity? I started using the term user-centric in 2004 when I was at Skip and briefing analysts like the Burton Group about the vision we had for the future of identity on the internet. In 2005, I coined the term Identity 2.0 at O'Reilly's Open Source Conference. Identity 1.0 were these walled gardens, these silos of identity, where identity was locked into each of these sites, a site-centric architecture with a site in the middle. Identity 1.0 is in sharp contrast to a user-centric architecture where the user is in the middle and the user can move their identity from any site to any site, and we have Identity 2.0. In this model, we have claims that represent aspects about the user that come from a variety of different places and they can take those claims and present them to a site whenever they want to. The claims come from an issuer. There's an agent representing the user. The agent can take the claims from the issuer and then present those claims to a site or relying party whenever the user wishes. In this architecture, no trust is required between the agent and the issuer or between the agent and the relying party. There, of course, is trust between the relying party and the issuer, but notice this is an asymmetric relationship. The issuer may have no knowledge of the relying party. This architecture is supported by Microsoft's info cards and could be implemented by OpenID 2.0 and Attribute Exchange. It enables an identity platform that would let a big bang of identity transactions and innovation happen that would let us have these deep, rich digital personas. So let's look at OpenID Connect and how it compares to user-centric architecture. In OpenID Connect, there's only one issuer that can be operating at a time and that issuer is also acting as the agent for the user. And then you can take the claims from that one issuer to any relying party that trusts that issuer. This is creating an identity service. And OpenID Connect is an important technology to standardize. But let's not be mistaken, it is not a user-centric architecture. So why is user-centric important? Well, let me tell you an identity story. And we'll need to make believe, as we go through the life of Jane DiGerati, starting at age six, and her first identity transaction in elementary school where she gets her personal education number and she needs to provide these claims. At 16, she needs to get a driver's license, she opens a bank account, gets a credit card, gets a mobile phone. At 18, she applies to university, gets a student loan, gets her first computer. At 21, she goes to Mexico, gets a passport, airline ticket. At 22, she applies to med school, enrolls in the College of Physicians and Surgeons, gets her own home and needs power and cable. At 24, she works part-time as a healthcare worker, purchases her first car, gets auto insurance. At 25, she ends up in an accident, unfortunately, ends up in emergency. She was doing it while she was working, gets some rehab. At 26, she does some medical research and she graduates, starts a new business, medical practice, opens a corporate bank account. At 28, does some continuing ed. One of her grandparents ends in the hospital. That doesn't end up well, but she does meet a nice guy ends up getting married, having a big party, needs to change her name, they purchase a home, they get a mortgage, and unfortunately it ends in divorce. As you can see, there are numerous claims that Jane has needed through her life to do these transactions, and wouldn't it be great if these were digital? Jonathan Zittrain recently released his book, The Future of the Internet and How to Stop It. And while reading it, I got thinking about the future of identity and how to stop it. In Jonathan's book, he talks about how the internet and the PC are these generative platforms that enable all kinds of rich innovation, things people had never envisioned before. I see the same thing being possible with user-centric architectures, that it's a generative platform that enables these deep, rich digital personas. So what can the OpenID Foundation do? Well, the question is, what can the foundation do? The board members come from a variety of things and have different ideas about what they want to accomplish. Their definition of identity is quite different depending on their perspective of where they're looking at it. It seems like each of us is looking at a different part of the iceberg that's sticking out of the water. Getting anything done in the foundation is like herding cats, and we fail to deal with the political elephants that are in the middle of the room. It doesn't help that the original OpenID technology is really a Frankenstein of a bunch of pieces cobbled together as we pulled together various parts of the user-centric community. The market has said that we need to improve the usability of OpenID, and we failed to do that. We've needed to improve the security, and we failed to do that. 
and OpenID Connect doesn't help with either of these things. So what should the foundation do? Well, one of the things I think that's mo very important is that we need to ensure that a director serve in the interest of the foundation, not their individual organizations. I believe we should focus the OpenID brand around being equated with user-centric identity and then facilitate a user-centric identity platform that will provide amazing network effects and focus on a single protocol result. It's great to have a bunch of different ideas, but we need a single, simple protocol that we get everybody to Im implement. So we can create an amazing identity platform and have the big bang in identity that ha enables huge amounts of innovation as people develop these deep, rich digital personas. Thank you.